from Los Angeles. It's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. God damn it! And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No, I am your host. Write down our toll-free telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show brought to you by Ford. Bold moves, they happen every day. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. I've been trying to beat this into Dean's head. He's not getting it. He's not getting it. He doesn't believe me. He doesn't believe what I'm saying. Dean, look around the street. Unless it's a Mary Kay representative, nobody drives a pink Cadillac. It's a metaphor. It's a euphemism. And how many thousands and thousands of concerts have you been to? How many songs have you heard over the years? Rock and roll is all about sex. In fact, the pink Cadillac reference comes from the blues. I mean, when, that, when, when Aretha Franklin says, take a ride in my pink Cadillac on the freeway of love, she is not talking about driving a car. If she said pink taco, would that make it more obvious? I mean, they can't say what they're trying to say in a song that gets played on the radio. They can't. I remember when the light bulb appeared over my head when I was, by the way, I was like 12 years old, okay, and I've been listening to Top 40 radio as a kid, because I just like the songs. Brown sugar was not about a cooking ingredient, okay? Like the light bulb appeared over my head, it's like, wait a minute. These guys are saying something like, like if they actually said it out, they couldn't say it on the air. By the way, in the case of Aretha Franklin, it definitely is a pink Cadillac, not a pink Subaru or a pink Kia. I'll tell you that. It's not a pink taco. It's more like a taco salad. I know what you mean. I know what you're trying to say. I'm dumping this entire conversation. I didn't say anything. Keep your pants on there. You know, Bruce Springsteen talked about uh, taking a ride in a pink Cadillac. I'm telling you, Dean. It's not because Springsteen liked old cars. I showed Dean the lyrics of the song Pink Cadillac, which was uh, written by Bruce Springsteen. He talks about the pink Cadillac oozing down the street. Cars do not ooze. But I'll tell you what does ooze. Don't you dare. I know what you're trying to say. Oozing down the street. How many hints do you need? What they're talking about. Kidding me? The pink Cadillac reference goes back to the days of the blues. It's been around forever. People are always talking about taking a ride in a pink Cadillac. Isn't it amazing how many songs talk about taking a ride in a pink Cadillac, and yet nobody drives one? Hell, even Angeline drives a, a pink Corvette. Nobody drives a pink Cadillac. Get a clue. <laughs> but Aretha Franklin says, ain't no sin. Take a ride in my machine. She's not talking about a car, Dean. Seriously. You'll be amazed how much more interesting music is when you realize this, that half the songs try to say something really really vulgar and they can't exactly say it so they have to find other ways to say it 
Come on. <laughs> it's so funny. You gotta be kidding me. <laughs> he actually believes that uh here it is oh wait, here it is right here. I I can't even I can't even read that. And Gary went to the Urban Dictionary and picked out Pink Cadillac. And all it says here, I'm just going to have to edit for radio, a girl's uh, foo-foo is sometimes referred to as a pink Cadillac, and then it gives, like, a way of using the term. Honey, I just wonder what it feels like in the back of your pink Cadillac. Well, why don't you hop in? Are you getting it now, Dean? Are you starting to see this? Gary, maybe we could do a quick search and find out how many songs. Is there a way to search, like, song lyrics? How many songs the phrase pink Cadillac comes up in? <laughs> I can't believe I'm sitting here with a 37-year-old individual who has been to countless concerts, owns a bunch of CDs, listens to satellite radio all day, listens to the Rolling Stones channel on Sirius. I mean, the guy is constantly listening to music. Did you think brown sugar was like about how to make a cake? How come brown sugar tastes so good? Oh, I don't know. Because it comes from molasses? <laughs> you know why brown sugar tastes good? Come on! <laughs> it just blows me away. How many people haven't understood this element of rock and roll? That rock and roll is replete with double entendres and euphemisms and metaphors, many of which were handed down from the days of R&B and soul and blues music. By the way, you should listen to some old blues sometime and find out how much of this is in there. It's full of it. That's part of what makes it fun. Nothing is more fun than listening to one of these, uh, one of these jazz and blues stations where they have taken an African American art form, which is anything but antiseptic, and they have uh, essentially fossilized it. It's like putting it in a museum and putting each song up on a, you know, in a fancy frame or something. You listen to these radio stations where they have the megathons all the time, and you listen to the lyrics of some of these blues songs, man. I mean, it's outrageous what these guys are saying. It's all about screwing around and doing drugs and screwing somebody else's old lady. I mean, <laughs> but they can't say that in the song. Also, it would not be that artistic to say it in the song. So they find creative ways of making these points. They're going to ride the pink Cadillac. Dean, Dean thinks there's all these songs about, like, old cars. Come on! <laughs> I think it's so funny. Anyway, I just had to say that. <laughs> I had to get that in. Just... Um, oh, you're only 30. I thought you were 37 by now, Dean. You're still only 36. I didn't want to send you over the hill too quickly. Are you still uh, going out with the old Stromboli, taking it out, delivering it hot and fresh, Dean? What are you doing with that? We haven't heard much about your sex life lately. You got any? You getting any? Picking up chicks on the phones? Oh, you're just not talking about it? Oh, ooh, he's getting coy about it now. Not uh, No kissing and telling anymore? Why? Because we beat the crap out of you on the air? You lay, are you laying low from us or laying low from females? Which is it? Laying low, period. Laying low, period. All right. So if a woman offered right now for you to come out and nail her hard or take a ride in her pink Cadillac, you, uh, you would uh, not take her up on it? If you offered you a bite of a pink taco, would you uh, tell you already had lunch? <laughs> If somebody offered you some brown sugar, would you tell them you're on the Atkins diet? <laughs> oh, I can't go to Pink Cadillac. Do you know what kind of gas mileage those things get? It's terrible. It's all wrong. But that's not what I came to talk about, as talk radio callers always say. That's not what I came here to talk about. I came here to... <laughs> 
It just happens to be what we were talking about off the air. And frequently the conversation we're having off the air can be better than the conversation we were planning to have on the air. So my philosophy the last few years has been, if the off-the-air conversation is more interesting than what you would have done on the air, do that. Put that on the air. It doesn't matter that it's Dean I'm talking to. It doesn't matter if we're talking about something silly like pink Cadillacs and pink tacos and brown sugar. It doesn't matter. By the way, I, I'd be willing to bet if Dean at 36 doesn't know about all this stuff, I'll bet there's other people out there going, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. <laughs> oh my god now, now you see Dean your assignment is to go home and listen to Freeway of Love by Aretha Franklin which was a top 10 hit in 1984 it's time to go home and listen to that song again with new ears And that big, chunky monkey that uh, Rita Franklin there wants you to ride in her pink Cadillac. You give that some thought. <laughs> anyway, I couldn't resist. But that's not what I came to talk about here. I came to talk about something completely different, if you don't mind. A listener named Tim who lives in San Diego. And here's what Tim writes in. He says... Hey, Tom, I just wanted to suggest that you talk about one of my favorite subjects or situations. Do you ever see those women who are around 32 or 35? They were former hotties. Now they realize they're glory days are behind them and they're panicking running out to get lipo or facelifts or breast implants or whatever sometimes this even occurs as young as 28 or 29 for some reason I just get a thrill out of the scramble these women are in as they try to still act like they're as hot as they once were they don't have the looks to make up for that attitude anymore. I'm a 26-year-old guy in San Diego. And while I love girls my age, I love to prey on these women. Because they are especially easy and insecure and just fun to toy with. Due to a lot of harsh tanning, makeup, and maybe even drugs. I also went into women who are going through this period, even in their mid-twenties, when they realize their vagina power is decreasing rapidly. It's Tim in San Diego. Tim, you, you have hit on nail, you've hit on the nail that I've been hitting on for such a long time, and you're seeing it now for yourself. These girls, beginning at age 14 or 13, going on up to about 25, who lord it over you that they're hot, sexy, tiny waists, big bazongas, juicy asses, sometimes with the word juicy imprinted on them uh, over their clothing. They know they're all that, and they hold it over your head. They want you to pay attention to them, buy them things. That's what they wanted. You couldn't afford them. They know it. And they date guys who are older than you, more educated than you, more successful than you, more professional than you, have more money than you. And it makes guys wild with anger and frustration. But you never look at the, the flip side of this. The good part. The time when the clock starts ticking. When, just like Superman, when he's faced with kryptonite, these women start to uh, lose their power. Their attractiveness goes down. Their ability to get money out of guys, trips, jewelry, condos, expensive meals, bottles of crystal. 
their ability to do this starts to deteriorate, and they panic. I love seeing women like that. Women who are frantically in the gym trying to keep it up. Women who are constantly exfoliating, constantly with the oil of Olay, constantly with the tanning sprays, constantly trying in every possible way to keep from losing what they have. These girls know as young as 12 that they got it going on. And they get used to the idea of every old purr following them around, and they figure out how to work it. To the point where many times they don't know how to get things on their own. They have to uh, use what they've got to get guys to give them stuff. And then you see these pathetic whores out there later on when they're not beautiful enough anymore to get what they've been getting. When there are newer, younger, hotter models around. And the richer, more successful guys are going for them instead. Professionals, what have you. These are the women who run ads in uh, Match.com or any of the personals, Craigslist. They say, uh, I'm tired of partying. I'm ready now to settle down. I've had my fun. I'm ready to settle down. All right, Poindexter, I didn't talk to you in high school, but now, now that I've been driven over a few speed bumps over the years, now that I've got over 100,000 miles on the odometer, this party girl is ready to become domesticated. It's the ultimate revenge when you see these desperate women running around. Oh, God, I can't get enough. I am all over those personal ads, all over them, watching these desperate women jockeying for position. It's like they're playing musical chairs and the music just stopped and they're all trying to sit down and one of them's not going to have a chair. They're all freaking. It's the ultimate payback. And personally, I feel good about it. Don't you? Tom like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. You have the show that every other jock out there wishes that they had. This is the show everybody promises, but nobody ever delivers, for Christ's sake. It's the Tom Likas Show. Tom Likas Show. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. A random caller this hour. We'll get a copy of Smallville Season 5. Smallville Season 5 now available on DVD. It's Scott on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Scott. How are you doing? Do you care? You absolutely, I do. I'm doing great. Good to hear, good to hear. Well, hey, I wanted to share something with you. I work in the uh, pharmaceutical sales, talking with a doctor uh, about, you know, why women get all crazy, similar to the topic you're bringing up. And it correlates with uh, basically when they're hitting that sexual peak, we all know 27, 28, they start 26, right in that area. Yeah. That same idea starts getting to the whole nesting, and that's why, quote, unquote, the sexual peak. It's not really a peak, it more or less that they're trying to reproduce. They're starting to want to become a mother. It's that alarm going off, dealing with the libido. And that's why they just start going out and getting laid like crazy if they are single. So that's also when you hear they go, what in the hell, she got married in three months? What? Do you, well, well, that's why. Yeah. And that's why these boys out there end up getting lynched on because their claws suddenly come out because that hormone starts going off and it starts nesting and they bring the guy down. They say, well, it's been working out so great. Come on, honey, you love me, don't you? And you sign on the dotted line. Yeah, why do I want to meet you when you're done partying or when you've had your fun? Right, right. You know, what, what, so I should buy you when you're a used car? I should have you when you had all your fun? Exactly. I'm scared of a woman with a college degree because I was in college. I was in a fraternity. And you know what? I, I'm sorry. There's too many stories from myself and my friends. I'm actually scared of a woman with a degree in that regard. Why? Nine, nine times out of ten, she did exactly what I did, was screw everyone in town. <laughs> and I'm sorry, she may be brilliant, and she may have an awesome job, but be wary. And I, there is no woman that's sacred out there. There's no perfect woman. Just accept that she's going to have a closet just like you. She's I'm just amazed that women have the gall. I'm amazed they have the gall to place ads saying, I've had my fun. Yeah, that's insane. Why do I want somebody else's hand-me-down? Are you kidding me? 
Right, right. Get me, hey, can I get my buddy's old sock? That'd be great, too. <laughs> can you give me some pass that along? <laughs> That's all you're getting. You That's right. Well. Exactly right. Uh, anyway, well, you know what? My dad taught me at a young age, and I think it should go right into the Tom Likas 101. No jewelry till you're 30. Miss Perfect will come along at least three times. Yep, you're right about that. Scott on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. How's it going, Tom? It's okay. Hey, I got a little scenario for you I want to run down. I have a family member for uh, security reasons. I'll call her Heather. And around the age of 13, she was screwing up in high school, so on and so forth. And she was sent off to a boarding military-type school in the Midwest. Did great there, graduated, came back here. Tons of money on this place being spent, you know what I mean? And when she moved back here, she started going to the bars and so on and so forth because she was smoking hot at the age of, like, 20, 21, you know what I mean? Yeah. She's picking up these guys in Tiburon and Belvedere, right. rich areas. Uh-huh. These 30-year-old, 35-year-olds who got big money and working it, so on and so forth. To make a long story short, she's 27, got with a guy, gets knocked up. Guy's like, it ain't mine. If it is, I don't care. DTB. <laughs> He's out of there. She yeah, I mean, I'm thrilled to meet girls who've been partying and who want to continue partying. That's great. From the age of 13 to 26, nothing done in her life but partying. She doesn't know nothing. Her family is Catholic. Will not will disown her if she aborts the child, and that's where she gets her money from. Yeah. She's screwed. She used to go to the city with all her little hot friends and go to the club owners and be like, here's the deal. I'll bring 40 of my hottest friends in here, but I want some kickback. That was her hustle. Besides working the rich guys out of Tiburon and Belvedere, Marin County. It was, it was unreal. She's got this kid. She's pregnant, due in a couple months. It's over. Unbelievable. Yeah, it's, it's, who it's, wants to who wants to impregnate that? I mean, uh, I know what is appealing about that. These women should think before they put an ad like that. Exactly. Who wants who wants somebody else's? You know, I don't shop at Goodwill. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I don't. I don't. Either. I don't. I don't, I don't my, do dumpster diving. I want my stuff brand new. Use it once or twice. Throw it away and buy another one. Right. <laughs> I donate my uh, old leftovers to charity. Yeah. Well, thanks, Tom. It was good talking to you. Can you, uh, this is an appropriate way to take me out if you would, Toby Style? Certainly I will. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, the air I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. I meet this girl the other night, and she's really hot. But she comes up to me at the bar, and she goes, "Oh, I want to be friends first. You got friends, right? Did you ever think of placing a classified ad saying, "You know what I need? Some more pals." <laughs> I wanted to be friends with my penis. The Tom like his shit. From Los Angeles, it's the Tom like his show. We were talking about an email from a listener named Tim, and here he is. What up? Oh, what's going on, brother? Not much. Got my email? Obviously. Yeah, what do you think about it? I read it. Yep. Pretty much, man, I see it all the time. You go to the malls here, you go to the clubs, you see all these chicks about 31, 36-ish, and you can tell back in the day, they had it. Yeah. And now, it's going away, so... <laughs> They're starting to freak out. And you know how when they get about 28 and they got some money, they start going to the plastic surgeon and whatnot? Oh, yeah. So, Desperately trying to hold on to what they have. I'm telling you. And it's like, if you're a young guy and you don't mind dabbling in the older chicks for a little while, you can just clean up. <laughs> you know, easy. Self-esteem is, you know. Hit them and quit them. Exactly. Use them and lose them. So, yeah. Well, it's funny, too, though, is that I see it now a lot. For girls who are even younger, like I see girls in their 20s, 22, 23, who I guess out of high school, they realize now they aren't the only hot girl in the school, so 
Uh, not only that, a lot of these girls getting stretch marks around their lips that you know, pretty much they're worn out by the time they get to be 20, 21. So, uh, yeah, thanks for that. Blow me up, man. Here you go. one 800 800 tom is our telephone number. Vanessa, on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Hey. Fan of your show. Cool. Um, well, my mom happens to be one of those ladies. <laughs> She's who? And um, right now, I like I like Tim said, going through, I guess, the self-esteem issue and you know, she has her boobs done, she's going under Botox, she's getting liposuction, she has braces on. And, uh, you know, unfortunately I have to say this, but it's pretty pathetic because she even, you know, tries to compete against my sister and I, you know, who, you know, we obviously look good. And, you know, it's, it's pretty sad when your mom, you know, tries to compete against her own daughters, you know? Now, there's a lot of that out there, isn't there? Oh, oh yes, definitely. And unfortunately, it's it's influencing my sister too because she went ahead and got her boobs done, and she's only twenty. Are you serious? Yes, I'm so serious. Now, now your mom and dad are split, I assume. Yes, yes, they are. And so your mom needs to find a new sucker. <laughs> yes, and uh, I don't know. You know, even though she's getting all this work done, she's still not finding a you know the rich guy that she's hoping. So, does your mom you know, compete with you in every way? Like, uh, if you have a decent guy, does she, like, try to get his attention? Um, no. Well, see, uh, I, n I never bring my boyfriends or my guys around here, so I... Is that because like, you're yeah. afraid she'll uh, try to steal them? Oh, no. No, that's not the problem at all. It's no? Just, she's very competitive, and, uh, you know, since high school, she's always told me, oh, you know, you're fat, you need to lose weight, you need to look like me. You know, she, she would sneak, you know, into my closet and wear my clothes and go out to the club and, you know, it's just it's crazy. It's, it doesn't make sense. I mean, I have actually been with daughters uh -huh. where, where the mom starts competing for attention. Yeah. In other words, mom tries to dress sexier than the daughter. Oh, yes. That's her, you know, cleavage and short skirts and that's, that's her. And uh, I have been around the mother-daughter thing. When the mother is like, you know, trying to out sexy the daughter, yeah, and bending over so you can see everything, yep, and getting awfully touchy feely. Oh uh, yeah. Your mom's yeah. never done that, has she? Excuse me. Your mom hasn't done that, has she? And we lost you. That's not good. <laughs> All right. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom, it's Edwin on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, yo, what's up, man? I'm Edwin. I know, I just said that. <laughs> hey, what's up, Tom? How much? Hey, first time listening, man. Hey, let's just say, uh, for your show, man, I'm in love, man. Everything you got is true, man. Nothing but the truth. So I got a comment about this. All these girls, the whole time they're young, 21, hot and single, all they want is money, right? Right. See, but here's the thing, though. Once they get that 31, 32, 33... Once they pass that manage, that's the best time to get them sometimes, you know? Oh, I'm not saying you, I'm not saying you shouldn't hit it and quit it. I'm just saying don't buy it. Oh, yeah, bro, because you got to take advantage of that. Now they're the ones trying to give you money. The other day I was at a club. Man, it wasn't even over. That girl was already giving me clothes, a bottle of liquor and all this stuff. And I wasn't even done doing nothing with her yet, bro. <laughs> she was like that, though, though. See, I hadn't even given it to her yet. And she's already giving me money, talking about all... Oh, you're going to call me, you're going to call me like, man, bro, of course you got to take care of that, you know? That's right. When you get a chance to do it like that, you got to well, I always say, you it. know, don't buy an old rental car with a lot of miles on it. Just rent it. Exactly, exactly. Take it, put it this, use it, abuse it, and right. let it go. Take it back to the deal and go get something new. Exactly. Trade it in. Exactly, bro. <laughs> all right, all right Tom, good looking out, bro. That's all I wanted to say. All right, Edwin. Thank you for the call. 1-800-5800-TOM. Is our telephone number Josh on the Tom Like His Show? Hello, Tom. How you feeling, Tom? Doing okay, Josh. Good, good. Hey, uh, short time listener, uh, first time caller. Good. But I tell you, man, you ride home with me every day now. I love that. Hey, the, yeah, I can't say that I agree with everything, but this one, you guys are nailing it, man. Hard. It's it's so true. You know, I was I was in the Navy five years, and you see this everywhere you go. I, I had a girl I was dating in Virginia, 
And uh, her mom had it back in the day, obviously. But uh, she would call me and my buddy, you know, hey, you guys want to come over for dinner? We'd get there, and the girl that I was kind of seeing wasn't even home. She'd just be wanting to hang out with us, and she'd come out and in her uh, Vicky Secret saying, oh, what dress should I wear when I go out tonight? I'm like, whoa, hey, time out, lady. You're like 42. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy, though. It's crazy. It's oh, I love when they're desperately trying to hang on. I think it's, it's great. It's, it's, you know what, it's, it's entertaining, but it's sad. Have to say it's Not sad for me. Stuff. Are you kidding? Well, sometimes you can reap the benefits for sure. No, no, it's, the uh, for sure it's the ultimate. Are you kidding? It's the ultimate payback. Let me tell you something. When I was in high school, I remember the names, the faces. I remember the list of all the chicks who wouldn't talk to me. All of them. I think we all got those lists. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. But here's the deal. Now I get invited to the high school reunions. I wouldn't touch these chicks with a 10-foot pole. No, not at all. They're too old for me. I can. I always say I can afford their daughters. What, what do I need them for? All right, Josh, thank you for the call. Long pregnant pause there. Time to go. Nathan on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom, this is Nathan. I've called you before, but uh, from Seattle. Well, I'm a famous 44-year-old. Yeah, it took all uh, 20 minutes, and, uh, yeah, she's pretty wild, but she's still partying, though. Really? Yeah. Yeah, but uh, when you say you're seeing her, what does that mean? I'm there for about an hour. So you see her and naked? My business and leave. So yeah. You're, so you're seeing her naked? Oh, yeah. But that's it. And some. And, and let me guess, she wants more. No, actually, she don't. Really? Nope. She's just in it for the score. Now, she's not trying to get knocked up, is she? Oh, that won't work anyways. I'm fixed. Oh! You think she's trying that? I care less what she's trying. You don't, know you don't mean. tell her you're fixed, do you? No. Never tell them you're fixed. Never. No, I can mess up a good thing. Always lie about that. If you're fixed, say nothing. Nope. Because <laughs> a lot of these broads just trying to get knocked up. Yeah, I don't want to mess up a good thing, because if she knows, she probably would just, you know. Yeah, Move does on. she have any kids? No. Yeah, so she very well could have the biological time clock thing going. Oh, probably. I wouldn't doubt it. Anybody that will uh, put out that fast. <laughs> well, they, they, they generally do. In their 40s, they generally do. They stop playing games because they know they can't be coy anymore. She's still smoking hot. Really? Yeah. All right. One of those Californians. I don't know if she had any work done, but... What do you care? Yeah. The hell do you care? Tom Likas. Come on. 1-800-5-800-866. It's John on the cell phone. Hello. Hello, John. No, you're John. Wait, 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 wait. You, I know you're messed up. You're John. I'm Tom. I'm sorry. Woo. My mind's crazy. I know. The Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show. At 1-800-5-800-TOM. Here comes Mike on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Mike? Tom. Yes. Hey, how are you doing today? Great. Uh, let me just give you a little opinion of you. I'm 48 years old. I've got a beautiful 27-year-old Colombian wife. And quite frankly, I think you're a pig. Why, thank you. you. You use, you think women are like toys. Use them, abuse them. Don't yeah. tell them you've got a vasectomy. That's right. What, like the pair of shoes, you put them on, throw them away when you're done with them? Kind of like that, yes. Uh, let me tell you what. Your mother should be ashamed of you. You think so? I personally think Why is you that? are the lowest piece of garbage. Why, thank I've, you. I've only listened to you twice. Really? And to listen to you just makes me sick. Mm, really? I've been married for, I was married for 20 years. My wife cheated on me. We've got a great relationship. I talk to her all the time. What, you have such animosity against women. I don't understand why. What? Well, you go out and marry someone young enough to be your daughter. I married her because she loves me i love her where did you meet her on the where did you meet her on the internet oh wait listen where did you meet her on the internet you can get the daughter mail order bride how'd you find her 
Huh? How did you find a Colombian living in Arizona? Were you on the Internet? No, I was overseas. I travel all over the country. Looking for women young as uh, no, your daughter? I work, I work pipeline. I'm in the oil business. Uh, I see. Pipe. It has nothing to really? do with Really? Why does everything with you have to do with sex? Why can't it about be having just a good relationship with somebody? Well, I, again, why'd your wife cheat on you? I, I, quite frankly, it really doesn't bother me that she... It doesn't bother you? Oh, so when you found out, it was perfectly okay with you. Uh, I stayed married to her for 20 years, and when she well, had her... Who's first, the fool? married about six... six, who, six who's, the, who's the fool? Apparently you are, the way you think about it. Not really. <laughs> Not really. Maybe if you thought the way I did, uh, you wouldn't be tolerating stuff like that. Dude, listen to me. You have no clue. You have oh, no yes, I do. You're the one who has no clue. You're the one. <laughs> I'll tell you what. You, you, you think we're somebody not cheated on me. Are you kidding? They'd be in the recycle bin so fast they wouldn't know what hit them. That's where they belong. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. The Tom Likas Show.